The following video presents the new features in Switch 12. First, there are the technical changes. Switch is now supported on Windows 8.1 and on OS X 10.9, also known as Mavericks. There is now the possibility to use Switch Designer on a remote computer. The users and groups now work differently and can be set up using Active Directory. The access to submit points and checkpoints has been changed, and it is now possible to limit the processing time window of a complete flow. We have also reduced the number of messages generated by the server. The performance of the split PDF and merge PDF elements has been increased. There are also some important changes to certain configurators. When launching Switch Designer, you will now see a dialog asking you what Switch server to connect to. If you have chosen not to see this startup dialog because you always connect to the same server, you can still get to this dialog from File, Connect to Switch Server when this situation changes. In order to have the Switch Designer on your local desktop, you just install Switch. There is no need to activate any licenses. When launching Switch, you see the dialog and you connect to a different server. That is all. Please note that the Switch Server can have a different operating system than your local computer. In the event that somebody is already connected when you are trying to do so, you will see a warning. Be careful, if you continue, the other person's connection will be terminated. This is useful so you can abort a connection that was unintentionally left open by somebody who has gone home. But if you are not sure, you may want to check before continuing. That is, if you want to stay friends with that person. There are two switch settings that are related to the use of the remote designer. In the Users pane, you can determine whether a user has the right to access the server with a remote designer or not. And in the Preferences of the local switch, you can set the language of the Remote Designer user interface independent of the language setting of Switch Server. The Users and Groups functionality has been redesigned. You will usually first add individual users. You are presented with a form where you can fill in the user's information. In the Permissions, you can define whether a user can see the server messages in Switch Client. This was previously only possible for users who belong to the Administrators group. When the option to view all jobs has been checked, that user will also see the jobs of other users. You can also add a group by clicking on this icon. For every group, you choose the group manager or managers and the members, all of whom must be existing users, of course. You can also set the permissions per group. This could cause a conflict. A group might have the right to view messages, but the user does not, or vice versa. In such a case, it is the user setting that prevails. When upgrading from version 11, the existing users and groups will automatically be adapted to the new setup. By clicking on this icon, you can add users and groups from an Active Directory server. An Active Directory domain controller manages and authenticates all the users in a company network. You can now configure Switch so the usernames and passwords will be checked against the Active Directory server and not the local Switch user database. This means that users can use the same name and password they use to log in on their company computers. In order to do this, you must first define access to the Active Directory domain controller in the Preferences. Consult your IT department for the values you have to fill in. In previous versions, you defined access to submit points and checkpoints starting from the group and you gave access to all submit points or checkpoints, or to individual ones. This is now different. You now start from the submit point or checkpoint and you add the users and or groups that have access to it. This is done at three levels. At the top level for all submit points or checkpoints, at the level of the flow, or at the level of the individual submit point or checkpoint. There, you add the groups and users at the level where you want them to have access. In terms of precedence, it is always the higher level that prevails. When a group only has access to one submit point, but one of the members has access to all submit points, then that one member will, of course, see all submit points. You can now set a time window on a complete flow, just like you could with input folders and the FTP and mail receive elements. It is a bit more convenient to be able to define this at the level of the flow. 
there is a special icon to show that a flow is activated and running when it is inside the active time window. And there is an icon to show that it is activated but not running because it is outside the active time window. In some cases, the number of messages generated by the server could be so high that it started having an impact on the performance. In this version, the number of messages has been reduced considerably by removing lots of unnecessary messages, but also by removing the debug messages that are commonly generated by configurators. If you really have to have access to the debug messages in order to find the cause of a problem, set the preferences to write them into a text file. You can find this text file in the application data root of your switch server, the path of which is also one of the preferences. And in there, you will see the debug messages. All Adobe configurators now support the Creative Cloud versions. The Quark configurator now supports version 10, and instead of having to output PostScript, you can now let the configurator output PDF directly. For the PDF output settings, you can choose one of the presets or you can type the name of the preset that you added to Quark. There is a new configurator to submit jobs to the HP SmartStream Production Center. It would lead too far to explain the properties here, but for users of this HP product, they will undoubtedly be clear. Finally, there is a new configurator for Corel Draw version X6. It is very easy to understand for anyone familiar with the Creative Suite, the Word, or the Quark Express configurators. There is an input connection for the Corel Draw file or for a folder containing one or more Corel Draw files. For PDF output, there are no options. You will get a PDF 1.7 with all the objects in their original color space, with the page boxes intact, with the fonts embedded, and so on. In short, with all the options that will create a good PDF that is as close to the original document as possible. Any further processing you may need to do on the file, downsampling images, outlining fonts, and so on, should be done with a third-party application like Pitstop Server. Thank you for watching this video and have fun with the new features in Switch 12.